Hello again, beautiful artists, and welcome back to another episode of Paint Along with Sky. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Sky, and I post beginning level acrylic tutorials here on YouTube every Saturday. So hit subscribe if you'd like to join the fun and paint along. Don't forget to hit that bell icon to be notified when I post a new video. Okay, so slightly new studio setup. Uh, maybe a little echoey here in my new house. Uh, greetings from beautiful New Mexico. I wanted to paint a hot air balloon painting today, uh, sort of in honor of my new locale. Uh, I have my three standard brushes plus a very small brush today that I'm going to be using. So square size, large brush, a medium size pointed brush here, uh, my small detail brush, and then my even smaller little tiny detail brush. I'm uh, gonna get those in my water cup off the side of the screen. If you'd like to see a materials list of all the different types of paints and materials that I recommend and use, go ahead and check the description box below and it'll bring you to my website and show you to a page that will have everything that I recommend. Okay, let's go ahead and jump in with the background step today and we're only gonna use two colors. So I have an ultramarine blue here and then a fair amount of white. This is going to be a really simple sunny sky. Uh, nice and clear blue sky here. We're gonna start at the bottom, kind of a little bit different than what we usually do. I often start at the top. And we're just gonna go back and forth here with a nice vibrant blue that I added just a little bit of white to. Okay, so back and forth brush strokes here with a sort of medium blue. So blue with a little bit of white added Nothing too tricky today whatsoever. Really start and simple. A little bit of water helps the paint go nice and smooth, but if you add too much, you might not have quite the opacity that you would like. I'm gonna scoop a little bit more white into my blue and I'm going to make just a one shade lighter than that. We're gonna be working our way towards a light, light blue at the very top. So this is just a really simple gradation, about as simple as you can get. Okay, back and forth here. And we'll go not quite halfway with that color. It's almost the same color as down here. And if you do find that once you get the paint on the canvas and you still you don't, you don't quite like it, and it might not be the right tone that you like. You can add some more paint right on top, okay? So you don't always have to mix on your palette. You can kind of mix on the painting. So in this case, I'm gonna add just a little bit more blue to the bottom, just because the New Mexico skies are the absolute most vibrant blue that I have ever seen. So pretty, it's because of the altitude. We are literally closer to heaven, I guess you suppose. <laughs> My paint dries very quickly here too. No more Pacific Northwest for this girl. Okay, and now I'm gonna be adding just a little bit more white. I am keeping a fair amount of my white still clean and separate because I'm going to add some beautiful white poofy clouds in a minute. So if you need to get more paint, that's fine too, of course. But I'm going to be mindful about keeping a little bit of my white somewhat clean. Okay, this is great gradation practice, but you know what, don't worry if it's not perfectly blended, there's no such thing as perfection. And it's gonna look good streaky too, because there could be streaky clouds, okay? So there's lots of different ways that skies can look, and they're all very beautiful. Okay, now I'm gonna take a really light blue towards the top here, even lighter, just so I have a nice blue to blue gradation here. Very simple. I wanna work quickly with acrylic paint, always just adding a tiny bit of water to help it go nice and smooth. And we've almost got our background all filled in. Very pretty. 
Gonna add just a little bit more blue right in the center there. Okay, that looks pretty good to me. Long brush strokes going all the way across. Again, this is such great gradation practice when you're working with just all just tints of one color rather than one color to the other. <laughs> if you'd like to learn more about how to blend colors together, on how to mix certain colors and how color theory works, I do have a course on color theory called Color Theory 101 for the beginning acrylic artist. And I do wanna mention that if you follow my page on Facebook and you're part of the art club, you're gonna see this new promotion that I'm doing called Freebie Fridays, uh, where I'm going to be giving free access to that course to one lucky artist each week that would like to learn a little bit more about color theory. So go ahead and check that out below. The Facebook group is called the Art Club and it's designed for you to share your art. So if you're painting along, we'd love to have you in the Art Club as well. Okay, now, as promised, I kept a little bit of my white somewhat clean and I have my nice blue gradation here. And what I'm now just going to do is add some clouds. And again, clouds take many, many different forms. Uh, so definitely give this a try, don't be scared. I'm going to try to do these big, puffy white thunderheads that are just totally iconic in New Mexico and very, very prevalent every day here uh, because it's monsoon season. So all this dry, hot desert heat evaporates all the water into these gorgeous clouds and then it rains it down on the desert. It's very moist. <laughs> I didn't really expect that the desert would be very dry, but it's actually quite green. Okay, so what I did there, just a couple little kind of curved brush strokes. I'm kind of kind of frame my composition here. So I have like three or four, maybe even five little curved brush strokes and then flat bottoms here. I'm just being kind of messy in my filling in and getting a little bit kind of scribbly feeling. And usually my paint would blend, but it's so dry here that my paint's already dry, which I kind of like, I'm very impatient with that. So that's been handy too. And our balloons are gonna be way up high in the sky. So I'm gonna do a big poofy cloud down here too. Add a little bit of water to my paint. There we go. So the idea is that it blends with the blue a little bit. Nice. And you really don't wanna overwork these. It's really just a few brush strokes and then once it looks pretty good, you just step away. <laughs> All right, don't go too far. When in doubt, leave it out. Oopsie, and I shouldn't have messed with that cloud. Follow my own advice. Okay. All right. I think that is looking really good. Just wanted a few little streaks of white over there to kind of balance everything. And then that, we're gonna let this layer dry and come back and add our balloons. So I'll see everyone in a few. Okay, welcome back artists. We have a dry background here and this time a full spectrum of rainbow colors on our palette. Uh, so I've got black and white as well as red, orange, yellow, Phthalo green, ultramarine blue, purple, and burnt sienna brown. I rinsed my brushes and got fresh water at break as well. Okay, let's go ahead and jump right back into it. All right, let's start now with blocking out the shapes for our balloon. So I'm gonna have three balloons. You can decide however many balloons that you would like. And I'm going to start by creating the shape just with white alone and my small, uh, second to smallest brush here. So what I like to do is start with a circle. And the most important part here is kind of like how you're gonna block it out. I think I'm gonna have like my largest one right here and then maybe a sort of medium size one and then a small one. Um, so I'm gonna start with a circle. This is going to be my largest one. And then I'm going to bring a triangle shape down from the circle that has a flat bottom there. 
And then once I have my shape, I'm just gonna go ahead and fill it in with white as well. There we go. Like so. And that's going to give a really nice base for the rainbow colors that we're going to put on the balloon later. Okay, so just white balloons to start. Perfect. Looks good. It's not ever going to be a completely perfect circle, so I'll go ahead and let that illusion go right now. <laughs> okay, and then let's see. I want to do three, so I think I'm going to do one kind of over here. And then a small one, maybe right there. I find that starting in with circles just makes it so much easier to create that balloon shape. Okay, and then just creating a little triangle with a flat bottom. like so. You don't want it to get too long. They're pretty round rather than the shape of like a traditional balloon, which I think is a little bit more oblong. And as I'm saying that, I want to like take this out a little bit more. There we go. Like so. Super cute. Okay, now that we have them filled in with white, I'm going to go ahead and add our beautiful colors. So base colors first. I'm gonna go ahead and just start with this medium sized one. And I'm going to make like a New Mexico flag style. So I have yellow here that I'm just going to mix with white. And you do wanna give your paint a second to dry if you can, but of course, here in New Mexico, it's like instantly dry the second that I put it on flat on the canvas, <laughs> which I love. All right, so just my base color there. I hear some thunder from the thunderheads. Okay, looks very good. So you see how much brighter that yellow is on top of the white? If you were to put it on top of the blue, you would barely even see yellow. It would be like bright green. Okay, now I'm going to take a little bit of my phalo green, one of my favorite colors, and I'm going to mix it with white for this little balloon on the back. A little tiny bit wet with white still, but that's okay because these are pretty light colors. And as I fill in these little shapes, just always I'm being mindful of the direction that my brush strokes are going. That's really everything when it comes to painting is brush stroke control and how deliberate you are with your brush. Every little brush stroke matters. So you can see there my sort of up and down and along the shape of the balloon brush strokes is already sort of giving it a little bit more definition and roundness. Okay, now we're going to work on this front balloon here, which is actually my favorite one. And I'm going to start with that same light yellow that had just a little bit of white mixed into it. And I'm going to do a stripe right down the center of my balloon. And this stripe is going to be pretty much just a long rectangle. Straight up and down. Okay, once again, on top of that white, it's giving us some nice opacity. Now we're going to create rainbow stripes on either side. So I'm gonna take a little bit of orange, not even having to mix it with anything. Just going right out of the bottle here. And we're going to sort of start to curve our stripes a little bit as we get further away from the center. This is going to be rectangular still, but I'm gonna curve a little bit 
in the shape of the balloon. Okay, and then the orange is gonna meet the bottom there, like so. Looks good. Now I'm going to take red and put that red right next to the orange, leaving just a little bit of space for one more color, which will be our purple. Okay, being as delicate as I can up there. Slightly curved. And then purple. I think this composition is just so refreshing. I have a lot of air sign <laughs> in my chart. Aquarius, so. Open skies, sweeping mountain landscapes. I'm all about it. Okay, just taking my purple in there ever so delicately. There. Lovely. Okay, now we're going to take some green and rather than using this sort of teal that the white and phalo creates, I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow and create more of a grass green. There we go. And maybe a little bit of white as well. And with that green, I'm going to sort of mirror the orange stripe. And those curves, again, are just like really subtle ways to start creating that roundness of the balloon. Very nice. And now, for a blue stripe, you can add a little bit of white in there if you'd like, but make sure that it's considerably darker than your background blue. And we are actually going to end up with a little space for purple on the other side too. So we worked our way all the way around the rainbow. And I'm sure this balloon would have a few sort of stripes of each color. So we're seeing yeah, full spectrum with this angle. Nice. And then just a little bit with my purple. This all could be done, if you prefer, with your tiniest brush. I'm leaving that one for details. The lighter you are with your touch here, the more control you're going to have. When I was a little kid, in my first painting class, I was in kindergarten. <laughs> my teacher said, let's all pretend like we're painting on the backs of little bugs. And you don't want to squish the bug. <laughs> that stuck with me, clearly. Okay, so no bug squishing, very gentle there. A little bit of roundness already with the shape of our brush strokes. Okay, that's looking really nice. Let's add a little bit more depth here uh, with some highlights. I'm gonna grab now just a little bit of white. I'm going to take this a few places. So here in the background, I'm gonna add some white to the top part of the balloon, very gently. And then I'm gonna have a few stripes of white going down my colors as well. I pulled up a little bit of green there. That's the fun thing about acrylic is you can never really make a mistake because <laughs> there you see I just pulled that green right back up. Okay, so be mindful of things that are not yet dry. Very, very, very 
dainty brush strokes here, very gently, just creating a little bit of depth around the balloon here. Okay, now similar step here, but with shadows. So on our back balloon, I'm gonna grab a little bit of black and mix that in with my teal. And here is actually where I'm going to grab my smallest brush. So the smallest one you got here, we're working with some pretty small shapes today. And I'm going to outline the bottom here with a few brush strokes coming up. And just kind of outline the sides as well, really lightly. Okay, so distance balloon. If you went too heavy handed with either step, with your highlights or your shadows, just add some more of that base color right back in. Like so. And this one's so tiny. The details don't matter that much. That's fine. We need a little bit more white. <laughs> Cute, I like it. Okay, and now let's add our little baskets. Okay, so you're gonna add shadows too, but here, let's add some baskets first so that we can kind of address each little area with highlights and shadows. I took my brown and I mixed just a little bit of black and white into it. You're just gonna go right underneath each balloon with a little basket where the totally crazy people <laughs> are floating terrifyingly high up in the sky. And I'm taking photos from below. <laughs> Hello, up there. I'm definitely afraid of heights. I kind of want to do it anyway. Feel the fear and do it anyway. Cute, okay. And now to finish off that one in the back, I'm just gonna take a tiny little pinch of black and sort of connect the basket to the balloon. And then just the tiniest little bit of white. This is a really tiny balloon. <laughs> little highlights in there as well. You can tone that down slightly with some brown. It's almost like a little bit of a scribbly feel there. So that balloon is looking pretty good. I'm realizing since I have this tiny detail brush, I might as well be pretty detailed. Okay, let's go ahead and work on our New Mexico balloon now again. And I'm going to do this great sun that I forgot the name of, <laughs> but I should know this, but please bear with me. I'm a newbie here. Um, but it starts with a circle. Like so. And then two long lines from the top and from the side. like so. Still using that real small brush. Like so. Looking good. And then slightly smaller lines right next door. Trying to be as straight as I can with my lines. And actually, yeah, let's take a little bit of black and just go around the center again. Like so. That looks pretty cute. Okay, now I'm gonna add just a little bit of shadow here around my New Mexico balloon. I'm gonna take a little bit of orange, mix it with yellow and a pinch of brown. 
make a nice burnt orange. And from the bottom here, just a few brush strokes coming up and through like so. Super cute. Okay, and then just finishing off the little basket there as well. At the bottom, you can have even a few lines of black coming up and then connect your basket. A little bit of an outline and a few little hash marks. Like so. Okay, that looks pretty cute. Just gonna go ahead and leave it. <laughs> Once again, when in doubt, leave it out. You don't want to overwork these teeny tiny little details either, okay? Then I went ahead and added a little bit of light brown, but yeah, so a little bit of light brown there in the basket. And since I have that on my brush, I'll go ahead and add it in my top balloon as well, which is going to be our final balloon here that we're going to finish. And I'm gonna grab a little bit of black here. And from the bottom, just kind of slightly outline it, like so. And then at the very bottom of each of our colors, I'm gonna have just a little shadow. Like so. Now I'm going to do the very top as well. And start those shadow lines along the top. Like so. Okay. And now I'm going to outline my basket Gonna add a few little hash mark brush strokes there. Connect it with my balloon. Looks like I am just gonna outline the whole thing. Yeah, that's fine. I was going to leave a little part not outlined, but what the heck, okay? Super cute. Gosh, I love balloons, okay? And then a little bit of white into my brown. I want a little bit more highlight there. Even lighter. Cute, 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 cute. These are like, not wicker, but wooden baskets. Full people. Okay, look at how cute. Gosh, I love it. Okay, super simple painting today. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know what you thought of today's painting in the comments section below. I'd love to see you over in the art club. And don't forget to enter the giveaway freebie Friday. The uh, winner is going to be announced on my Facebook page and my Facebook group next Friday. We're gonna be doing that promotion for a while, so make sure and check that out. Okay, that is all the instruction that I have for everyone today. So I do hope you enjoyed, and until next time, stay creative.